Greetings and welcome to another episode of Let's Play The Journeyman Project 3 Legacy of Time. Alright, I was ex uh, complaining about why I don't like this game so much. Here's one of the things I actually do like. I like Arthur a lot. <laughs> Although I can admit, he can be a little bit overbearing at times and, well, I don't fully understand why they had to make him the Universal Translator. And I do feel he's a bit overused. A lot overused. But I don't mind him. He was in a previous game and he was helpful. He was snarky. He was me, if I was sitting on Gage Blackburn's shoulder. That's another thing, by the way. Why did they have to find another actor for Gage Blackwood? All the other actors are back. Why did they have to change Gage Blackwood? Maybe, uh, maybe it's some other reason that I'm not aware of. Perhaps the other actor just didn't want to do it anymore. That's also possible. I just find it strange that all the other actors said yes. When, when the main player apparently just uh, didn't get enough face time, apparently, I guess. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what Arthur has to say. According to history, this uncharted island never existed. However, we are relatively close to Thera an island that erupted in a huge volcanic explosion a few hundred years ago. The crater it left became the island of Santorini. Well, that one I know, at least. That's, of course, that still doesn't explain where we are. It really just says Mediterranean Sea. The destruction of Thera had far-reaching consequences. From about 1950 to 1450 BC, the Minoans of Crete ruled the Mediterranean during the golden age of their civilization. When Thera erupted around 1450 BC, volcanic ash from 70 miles away covered Crete, while tidal waves flooded the island cities, wiping out the great Minoan nation. It was later proposed by archaeologists that the lost continent of Atlantis could have shared the same fate. See? And here is already the hint why I'm not entirely sold on the locations they chose. But let's ignore all that. After all, we're here to explore. Well, this door apparently doesn't open. Now, I like the controls here a lot. 3D vision around you. No annoying clicking and all that. And I probably should hear him out. That building was not dilapidated from natural erosion. I would say that it looks freshly smashed. Hmm. Who would have it in for a windmill? Come on. Don't look now, but that broken windmill is staring you down. You're no Don Quixote, but I think you can take it. Yeah, let's not go into the mill just yet. Before I, uh, cleverly ditched that annoying Agent 3, I did see some of this island. I recognize that windmill. Maybe if we explore more, we can figure out what the dickens is going on. Agent 3 said two of the time codes would be found at locations with high vantage points. Well, that windmill is the tallest thing still standing around here. Well, it sure is. That derelict boat seems to be in a hurry to leave the island. Hold on, there's somebody on that boat! He looks familiar. Call me time-space happy, but I swear that's Dr. Elliot Sinclair. The scientist who invented time travel. The guy you put away for 10 to 20 at Vega Thalon. He could be Sinclair's distant cousin. And you know what that means. Baldness is hereditary. Alright, that's jumping the shark just a bit. Here's where we came. 
That rope ladder is like one of your modern ladders in many respects, only more rope-like. Yeah, all right, let's move along. Clean up pile two. I'm trying to find all of the conversation notes Arthur has, but oh well, some things you just can't find. Don't want to use the uh, hint, because I already know what I have to do. I need to get upstairs. Oh, unfortunately, the stairs are broken. And now I can't find my way around. Come on. And we'll use the rope ladder. Yeah. The inventory system will sometimes glitch out. It's mostly to do with the mouse movement, I think. Uh, but uh, at least items are useful again. Oh. Oh no, the stairs are wasted. My parents are going to be pissed. see here. It's a nice view, but again, nothing to see. Well, nowhere to go but up, apparently. This island isn't deserted. It's been attacked. Something destroyed the city's seawalls and flooded it. Hmm. Well, that's no good. Oh, it looks like a storm's coming. Or rather, looks like nasty weather. See that every day. Then again. That Sirolan ship completely leveled that building. But the Sirolans are supposed to be the good guys. The founders of the Symbiotry. Why would our allies attack? We need to get to the bottom of this. Let me check out the time code. The time code you found is one third of a temporal coordinate. With the other two pieces, I can triangulate Agent 3's location. Well, you found one of the codes. I assume I have your interest peaked. 
Now, find the other pieces. There is still much more to see. The nerve of her. Coming in here, taking over my space. Next thing you know, she'll be cleaning up my workbench. Now, my question in all this is... How the heck did Agent 3 know where to go, when to go... ...to find all this? How could she possibly have known? We're in a null time pocket gauge. If this place was a verb, it would be regurgitate. Agent 3 and I discovered it when we were thrown into the time stream. Not a terribly exciting place to honeymoon, but I figured it was safer than where we just were. Gage, I think you're good for about 900 more flushes. Gage, help! We're trapped inside your screensaver! Yeah, it's nicely hypnotic. Alright, let's go to the other places. The Andes Mountains. On 500 AD. Well, 500 and change. So... Either Agent 3 has sent us to languish in a deep well, or we shrank into your turtleneck. <laughs> that looked like nasty stuff. What's all this? Maybe we could use that rope and bucket to send a message to the surface. Something like, help us, we're new to this time-traveling thing, or please fill the well with stairs. If this is a well, then one of my wishes is to be in a bigger well. Yep. Help! I'm feeling claustrophobic! But that can't be. I live in your helmet. Maybe I'm Santa claustrophobic. The fear of getting stuck in chimney-shaped wells? Do I expect you to leave this well? No, Agent Blackwood. I expect you to die! Eh. <laughs> uh. Rock out of the way. And then unleash the water. Next time we vacation in the past, I'll bring my swim trunks. So what's next? Bungee jumping off the pyramids? Bull leaping in Crete? Nope, getting out of this way. Take this one. I probably need it. Did you hear that noise? Sounds like there's some kind of commotion going on in the distance. Sounds like a battle. Or someone is playing generic science fiction sound effects. Part 2. Whatever tore through here seemed intent on breaking and scorching everything. From what I can tell of the remains, the former culture was very advanced, and judging from the shape of this plateau, they mastered terrace farming techniques. Although they probably should have put more time into the fire department. Another basket case. Nothing so big, we can't put it in a pocket. Mother looks thoroughly devastated. 
Now this is a dead end. Right. What's that? Looks like a hot air balloon. I think. In 500 AD? That seems implausible. time we go to a theme park, all the good rides are closed. For once, I'm at a loss for words. I can't think of a reason why those piñatas are here. Pre-Columbian South American cultures were never really known to be avid balloons. But then again, according to my knowledge of this time period, there was no record for this civilization. So it's another lost civilization, you say? The balloon closer to the ground appears to have been damaged. I can see that the higher balloon appears to be in better shape. It has an attached gondola. With the attached baskets, the natives could have used these balloons for transport. Yeah, that's what pretty much everyone else uses them for. Alright, what are we looking for? down to the ground. How do I do that? Maybe I can attach this wheel here. Yep. Not exactly the prettiest balloon, but it definitely maybe should fly. Oh my kidding, this baby's going down. Why don't you go up first, Gage, and I'll go find a shovel and dig your early grave. I like your confidence, but luckily I have a basket. hissing noise? Yes, I'm quite aware of how annoying that is. <sighs> the guy doing the voice for Arthur must have had so much fun doing this particular game. Now try not to think about the height gauge. We're only a hundred feet up. Just breathe deeply and sob into the in-flight magazine. And here we are, in the skies, risking our very lives, waiting to observe disgusting mating patterns of the South American Walla Walla Swallow. Mm-mm, hubba hubba. You know, being up this high in a hastily constructed, barely navigable flying balloon, and knowing that you've never had a flying lesson, really puts things in perspective, Gage. I found that being hundreds of feet in the air makes me twice as frightened! Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. So there's a hook attached to the balloon. Let's use our invisible hands to pull up the hook. Him our new rodeo grand champion. 
<laughs> I will see you all next time. <laughs>